It was June 2018. I just joined my ship as a first time officer and within 20 days of the first voyage, I was about to collide with another ship. In this video, I will share my experience of joining the ship as an officer for the first time and it's going to give you a lot of learnings. Let's start the video. It was the month of December 2017. I cleared my second mate's competency exam from MMD in Delhi and I was so happy because clearing those exams takes a long while. It took me almost one year to complete that after my cadetship. So I cleared that and understand in the shipping business, you don't get to choose the ship immediately. When there's a vacancy, then the operator assigns you a ship. Now it was already six months since I cleared these exams and I was waiting at home and my family got worried that whether I'm still employed or not. In fact, I was worried too. Now, in the early week of June 2018, which is after five, six months, I got an email from the company that you're going to join one of the biggest ships in the world. Now imagine my feeling, first time officer taking command of a navigational watch and I'm being given a responsibility of a 400 meter ship, which was the biggest ship at that time. And my hands were trembling. My mother could not believe the panic and anxiety I was feeling. I was feeling that because my mind was rushing too forward and I was assuming how will I control this ship with so many fishing boats in China. And those who have been following me know that I have been on those kinds of ship in season number two and I have been to China and believe me, I'm so grateful to God that that assignment got cancelled. Now this is a law of manifestation also I believe somewhere that I did not want it so I manifested that this gets cancelled. Anyhow, I was prepared for this but after one week, the operator told me no, you're going to join another ship which was the same sister ship from, from my last cadet ship which was the second time uh, cadet ship which I did. So now I was relieved. Now how uh, important it is to observe that, how the mind calms down when there is a familiar surrounding. So I got that ship. Now I was confident, you know, my shoulders were high and uh, my mother could see that no more trembling of these uh, hands. And she was like, okay, well and good, prepare for it. So uh, before joining as an officer for the first time or an engineer, you have to do certain courses which the company does. In my case, they did. Those are known as the feminization courses. Now I am an officer of the of navigation, so I had to train on those particular uh, egg disk. It's known as the electronic chart display information system. So I trained for that type specific, and even got more confidence. And it was I think June 18th or June 20th when my time had come to fly out of India. Now understand, it has been one and a half years from my last cadet ship. This gap of one and a half years makes you uh, forget most of the things you've done on the ship. Believe me, till now, when I sign off from the ship and it is two months past in those vacation areas, vacation time, I forget everything. It's like I was never there. So at that time, after one and a half years, the panic mode started kicking in as soon as I took off from India. Now I had to fly from India all the way to Doha, that is in Qatar. And from Doha, I had to go to uh, Kotono, which is a port in Benin, one of the poorest countries in the world. So during that flight from uh, Doha to Kotono, I was panicking like hell. You know, I have sweaty palms. So my palms started sweating and all those uh, past memories of, you know, failure, past memories of not remembering anything, past memories of doing something wrong started coming in right like zip 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 and uh, this time I had conditioned my mind till uh, to a certain extent but still believe me these thoughts will come in and they will affect you even the best of the best people like yogis will have those thoughts and you know it will affect them to a certain extent I landed in Kotonu and Kotonu is a very poor country and there's a lot of security issues over there so I was uh, on the airport, the airport was like a railway station, being very honest. And there was a, there was a lady with my uh, name tag on a signboard. And I saw that and she took me uh, to the immigration, which was a small room. And that's when I uh, started uh, having some sort of fear that where, where is my bag and I hope it will be safe because I have to be on the ship for the next five, six months. And there are cases 
where the bags get lost so what happens when a bag gets lost you you will still join the ship and you will uh, get the pp so you have to make do with the pp and the clothes you were wearing and the airlines will try to find your bag in the meantime and they will courier it to the next port the ship is going but it generally doesn't happen that way it takes a lot of time luckily i got that luggage and straight away i was put into the business hotel now on that route there are a lot of ship delays so i was there for 3 nights in that hotel enclosed and you were not allowed to go out because the passport was taken away by the uh, agent and this was before covid so i was not used to being trapped like that in that hotel but now what i did this time was instead of getting into a bad vicious circle of bad negative thoughts i started reading more about the ship manuals so remember this is the sister ship of my last cadet ship so i had those manuals in soft copy so i started reading them to get more confidence so whoever is going to apply for a new job suppose not in shipping but outside try to go through whatever your roles and responsibilities will be so 3 days 3 nights passed and now was the time to join the ship as a first time third officer now the part which helped me was this confidence i developed that i have read the manuals i have been on this kind of ship i have done my courses the tie specific courses so my shoulders were high and that is a very important thing which i learned that you have to be confident and confidence comes through knowledge so always remember have that knowledge with you which will give you a lot of confidence and the captain once he sees you he will also be uh, relaxed that okay this guy looks confident he knows what he's talking about and this will help you a lot i remember i was um, on the jetty and in kotulu it's a very old school kind of a setup like old swivel cranes not like those gantry cranes and i was feeling this nostalgic uh, memory that after one and a half years i'm back here and i'm going to have a big responsibility with a lot of money of course again ship came alongside gangway down and now is a very very tense situation what happens is the sign on sign off process is going on the operations of suppose refueling is going on the captain is busy the chief officer is busy the old third officer second officer busy all engineers busy all crew busy so you literally have to step in go to the captain's cabin but this time in my case the captain was sitting in the ship's office i entered the ship's office i saw the captain because captains are in the uniform during that time four stripes and captain uh, shook my hand but now my nervousness also started kicking in because i knew there was some captain who is very strict and for burma and i recognized that he is from burma and he looked strict now uh, he said okay calm down <laughs> they get familiarized now the good part about many companies is that as you join as a first time officer you will get a handover a sailing handover that means the old third officer will be there with you for like one week and you can then take o- take over from him so this helps a lot but in my case uh, that third officer was already in a sign off mode Uh, he was like just take over man everything is simple and but uh, i had those cross questioning things so understand you have to cross question your uh, person who is uh, who you are relieving because he is already at home from his mind so it's your responsibility which is my responsibility at that time to ask questions to clarify where the equipments are what are the maintenance schedules and all of that and of course most importantly for me was the navigation a bridge uh, overlay so 7 days were from kotonou all the way to valves way which is in namibia and during that time i did my handover one thing important to learn from is that take a notepad a small notepad and write everything down because remember this is uh, not so well versed with remembering things so i wrote everything down and that became like my bible then that i have to refer to this at all times whenever i am in doubt so from kotonou we reached uh, to Nam- uh, we were going to namibia so i remember at around 9:30 am and on the third day the captain came on the bridge and he handed over to me a checklist which was known as the induction checklist now this was not any normal checklist that you can tick this checklist there were question and answers just like a mmd oral exam or a maritime competency oral exam and this third officer he told me this captain is very strict you have to prepare now i was wondering i have studied for one and a half years and i don't remember anything like i told you now how am, how am i going to clear these checklists in uh, navigation you have something known as the cold regs which is colli- collision regulations to prevent collision we have certain rules so i started uh, reading all of them started learning them and uh, i was again like in that 
panic mode that if this doesn't go well i will be signed off from the from the valdez bay port and sent home and then i will be unemployed so i buckled up my game i put all my uh, focus into this study part in the overtime in the rest of the in the rest time and uh, i said okay this is it after uh, two days that was the fifth day the captain came uh, you know walking in fully like a full full instructor like in the instructor mode prepared to ask me all sorts of question again i was a bit confident because i had studied he said okay come here put the checklist in his hand and started questioning one by one and man what a grilling grilling session that was i was very upset at that time but now i realize how important that was because he has to sleep at night having this confidence that this third officer knows what he has to do so i answered most of them right some i was a bit confused something on the radar situation and all but that i could learn practically over the over time but the basics of collision regulation rules were something which i had to make sure of so that happened he was just just happy so we approached valves bay and the third officer went away now understand guys and girls when that third officer was walking down the gangway my heart was pounding and throbbing like tuk 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 cuz that moment of reality came in that now i have nobody to ask guidance from now i have to know how to navigate this multi million dollar ship by myself now it's a big responsibility i don't know how to put it in words i did the cargo watch in valves bay I did all the mooring operations after departure on departure safely but when the pilot was on board and we had to go out of the channel it was 11 pm at night and it was during my watch those of you who follow me know that once the pilot goes the captain also take gives the con as soon as the con that means now i am in charge of making decision on the navigation bridge and guys i was about to like faint uh i i was confident but still you know that that uh thing in the back of the mind that now i'm going to handle a multi million dollar uh, worth of cargo and the ship and 25 people with me it's a different experience luckily in south atlantic there are uh, not many fishing boats but i remember what happened it was a eye opening situation there was a ship 25 miles very far away stopped and anchored and we were going very close to it when there was a distance of 15 nautical miles remaining i started calling the ship that what is your intention what is your intention now understand all these things will be done by a first time officer or an engineer and it is good because you are uh, trying to assess the situation i'm sure a captain who's listening to this will be happy that okay this guy is taking action 10 miles before so i started calling and you know my watch keeper who was there he started laughing that what happened uh, third we are very far away the ship does not is not moving so i started making that call and i took such a wide alteration of when there was 5 miles remaining that the the watch keeper was laughing at me that third i i think i understand why you're doing this because there's a lot of pressure on you i said yeah man I, my whole job my whole training of 4 years and then one year of studies will go for a six if i lose the trust of the captain now understand the trust is very very important now remember whenever you are in doubt in any situation in life if there is a superior call them immediately don't do anything unsafe don't think that you are god you are a human being and you will make mistakes i have made a big alteration because i didn't want to break the trust of the captain and captain was very strict so i had more uh, uptight uh, <laughs> you know situation uh, about me so uh, i did that and the following morning i came on watch and the captain came at 8 am sipping coffee i was uh, i took over the watch from chief officer and the captain is like so karan bhai are you confident i said uh, yes captain i am okay he said are you okay i said yes captain i am uh, figuring out he said there is no time to figure out if you figure out we are already too late i said uh, yes captain so he, so he sat with me for the next 3 hours on the watch and he saw what i am trying to do now understand when there's a captain on the bridge you are sweating like hell i mean you are nervous if one wrong uh, thing you are doing the captain is going to give you bambu bambu means like some scolding it is a maritime term man as a 23 year old boy it is so scary to handle such a thing cuz you are fresh from your academy you are into that party mode you know who cares 
But when the responsibility comes, it makes you man. We crossed from Namibia, the whole Indian Ocean, and we were about to reach the Singapore Strait. Now, Singapore Strait is a place where even a two degree alteration can lead you to a grounding. So we were just going to enter and in Singapore Street, there are small thermocools which are floating at sea, which have got fishing nets below that. Now I started altering very rapidly. The captain came on running. He said, what the hell are you doing? I said, captain, there is a small obstacle. He said, these are thermocools. You, you don't need to give one nautical mile uh, distance from them. Otherwise you will go and uh, hit the island. I said, yeah, that makes sense. But I was just trying to abide and you know, see it clear. He said, listen, whenever you are in doubt next time, you call me first. That was my first lesson. That yes, I had to call him and I uh, did make that mistake, but it was a thermocool. So I was not very uh, concerned about it. But if it was a fishing boat, I would definitely would have called him. We tackled and it was time to hit the Singapore Strait. Man, oh man, I could have not done it alone. I saw hundreds of ships going this way, hundreds of ships coming this way in between fishing boats crossing like this. Now, as a navigator, for the first time, you are not trained or no, have no experience to deal with these things. So, a good captain will always be on the Singapore Strait to clear that channel. So, he came on the show, on the bridge, of course, and that day I realized that he was not strict. He had a lot of knowledge. And that knowledge was imparted in such a good way that he would take actions very boldly. And that is very much required. So I learned a lot from that captain. And um, of course, there were a lot of bamboo which was given to me. We passed Singapore Strait. Now I was a bit confident. It was already 15 days. And I was like, okay, relaxing on the watch. I understood how it is going to be. Most importantly, I understood how to maneuver the ship. You know, what are the actions I need to take? takes time, it takes a lot of experience. During cadetship, I hope you practice all of this with the watchkeeping officer. Because you will be directly onto the ship as a, a responsible officer after the cadetship and you have no time then. Now we came out of Singapore Strait. Now those who know that area, the Taiwan Strait, know what I'm talking about. Millions of fishing boats, millions. And the time was coming fast. And on the 19th day, we were about to enter the Taiwan Strait. In the meantime, I was doing okay with my responsibilities. My uh, uh, In that time, I used to do the life-saving appliances, which is lifeboat, life raft, all of that maintenance, as well as firefighting appliances, which is fire extinguishers, foam applicators, fire hoses, all of that. And of course, I was doing the port papers. I was doing all that, everything was okay. And Taiwan Strait was approaching. So the captain said, no more of all these uh, maintenance work or port papers, now you have to focus solely, solely on navigation. I said, yes, Captain. What happens is the Ectis has a connection into his cabin. So that cabin already has an Ectis, so he's monitoring and he's got windows, so he's seeing outside. So he was assessing how I'm going to tackle these things if I'm under pressure or making some uh, bad moves. So um, everything was okay so far. Now I remember, in the Taiwan Strait, there was a ship crossing from China going to Taiwan. So we were going like this and the ship was coming like this. Okay, so as per rules, this ship had to alter to starboard and keep clear of me. So I thought, okay, he will do that. And on my other side, I had a lot of fishing boats, so I couldn't go there. Now the situation was escalating like hell. And it was so tough that, of course, the captain came up immediately rushing. He took over the command. At that time, the captain takes over the command to give the decisions. And I remember my heart came into my mouth. Uh, like I was like, that's it, that's it. I'm going to collide today and this is the end. Within 20 days, I'm going. To, my career is over. But that's where a seasoned captain or an experienced captain makes the right decisions. What we had to do was something which I had never seen. We had to alter heart to starboard just clearing the fishing boats which were here and because he was experienced on that ship we take we took a 360 because this ship was not altering he was going straight we were going to collide with that ship and i became absolutely numb because in my in front of my eyes a lot of lives were getting lost a lot of cargo uh, was getting lost what the environment was getting damaged 
but i had already called the captain and the captain was already there so of course he was monitoring so he came up before even i could call but i was on the verge of just calling because it was still we had still, still some time so we assessed and we had to take a hard alteration to starboard turn around and make a full 360 and the ship was like this tilting and understand at sea the most important thing is to save the lives then comes the environment and then comes the cargo so in such situations you have to do you have to make bold decisions but my heart was in my mouth and i was almost crying and uh, the captain was of course calm but yet he was tense that what is going to happen you almost almost i saw that collision happening but that's when a good captain comes in and i felt so safe when he came on the bridge that yes that there is someone watching out what i want to tell you from this is that things happen all of a sudden out at sea especially you will think that the situation is going well but the situation can turn around any time and as a first time officer you are not trained that well not that well but you're not experienced too much so you can get numb watching such big things happening i know you must be wondering there's a vast ocean vast sea how can you collide but guys collision happen they happen luckily i learned so much that day that firstly call the captain in time secondly the decision once made has to be complied with thirdly the problem was on the other ship the communication was not so well so we were not able to communicate with them understand that vhf the the voice communication should not be done for collision avoidance it is the last measures so we have a rule we we have rules we, we follow that and it showed me why rules are so important that day now this also correlates with you people who are on land that follow rules and regulations and in this time as you have seen my previous two videos you would have noted that i have been through a lot mentally also this training which i gave myself helped me a lot to generate confidence and opened an or up opened up my horizon to learn a lot that learning of that entire near collision uh, experience made me learn so many things yes i was troubled i had fear but at the same time observing and understanding why the captain is doing like this of course at that time if you would do something wrong i have the right to tell him that captain this is not right but of course with me i also uh, agreed with his decision and everything went well and um, yeah these 20 days in the beginning whoever is going to join are going to be very tough write everything down keep learning keep reading books your manuals and call for help most importantly call the captain call the chief officer for the engineer call the chief engineer call the second engineer for the ratings speak to the chief officer for the os speak to the bosun for the cadets speak to everyone and of course speak most importantly speak to the dto which is the designated training officer who is the chief mate so please learn from this mistake not even mistake from these experiences because they happen and they come at a very fast pace i wanted to share this with you all because i'm sure many of you who are going to join the merchant navy soon are going to experience this on that note i have also made a book on how to join merchant navy covers all the courses all the criteria all the salaries talking about salary it's in here but i will tell you the salary of the third mate that time i was getting in the range between 2900 dollars to $3,200 as a third officer. So you can do the conversion on Google and um, that's the salary. So of course, the fourth engineer also gives, gets a similar salary. So those who are interested, yeah, this it's a handsome paying job. But remember, the responsibility you have here, it overpowers even this money. So don't join this just for money. Understand? Join it to experience, to become to mold yourself into a responsible officer or an engineer and see how dynamic life can get how tough you have to be to survive in this world it is a lesson for all and don't worry you are not alone thank you